Rinya Kobayashi, who has coined the Rinya Sung team, is actually on the stage and going to be our next match against David Carrere. So let's move over to the stage and look at these players getting ready. And let's jump into Masters Top 16. David is running out with that Grim Snarl and the Incineroar paired up against Rinya's Grim Snarl and Zacian. Yeah, it's a nice lead here from David. You've got to say that the Incineroar coming out this first turn's great for him. He is able to get that Intimidate onto the Zashian, neutralize that Intrepid Sword boost that he's got through the attack there, and also have access to Fake Out, which is an easy target if you mm -hmm. want into that Zashian, kind of making it a bit more uncomfortable this turn one where it has to be aware that okay uh, if i do attack here there's a potential that i'm not going to be able to get a move off and you've got threats from grimmsnarl to potentially throw something like a thunder wave that way that can't disrupt the rest of the game for you well incineral moving first fake out straight down into the zation as reflect goes up on david's side of the field why is when you're facing down against a physical attacker such as zation that is of course flinching as the grimmsnarl goes for the foul play and i like this getting that little bit of chip onto the opposing incineral yeah and that's maybe you can see where Rinya's going here. He's wanting to just get damage every turn that he's mm -hmm. going into this game, you know, not wanting to waste a turn. And it might depict a little bit more about how this Grimmsnarl that he's running is played because foul play not the more common option. We do see it quite often, but Spirit Break normally the option there and going for the damage onto that Incineral might indicate what he might be doing with the Zashi in the next turn. But obviously, the Reflect up on the field, it's a nice, safe play from Davi to make sure that you're not taking too much damage from the Zashian. Yeah, we're also going to see a Reflect paired up on Rinya's side, particularly when you know there's such strong physical attackers on both teams. David is also going to set up that light screen just in case a Charizard wants to come in a little bit later on from the back. Zacian, however, is going to be able to move on this particular turn and is going to go for that Behemoth Blade, find its mark down onto the opposing Grimmsnarl, dealing some big, big damage. Oh, Not enough and it to get the KO. That Reflect is paying off so much on David's side of the field and it allows the Incineroar as well to go for this parting shot. And I really like the way David is playing this, looking down at that Zacian and going, hey, you're going to be a problem for me. I'm going to set up Reflex. I've already intimidated you. You're down at neutral. But then going for that parting shot, reducing it by one more attack, means that Rinya is going to be in that situation where you might be forced to bring out your Zacian so it can be used more effectively later in the match. Yeah, and that parting shot there from David, great, because it allows the Groudon to hit the field now mm -hmm. in a prime time, you know. Both players taking advantage to get their screen support up so they're able to take attacks a little bit better. But David dealing with that immediate threat from the Zacian perfectly here, getting the Reflective, getting the Intimidate, and then that parting shot shot as well to get the ground on onto the field and now threatening with potentially a big press of his blades that could come out into both the targets on Rinya's side of the field. So you would imagine now that the Zacian's probably in a position where, okay, I probably should switch out here um, mm -hmm. and, and just try and get myself into a bit of a better position. You've got to think maybe the Charizard could come in if that, that is a possibility. Now the Sun's on the field and if you do suspect a, a Precipice Blitz to come out, it's also very risky to pull something like Charizard in because if you pull it in and V expects that then you mm -hmm. could lose a really pivotal part of your team quite early on I like the switch here as well, being able to throw another Intimidate down. You can see the Sacred Sword really not dealing too much to that Incinera on the switch. And Presbus Blades does avoid on the opposing side of the field, but it doesn't avoid the Zacian, which I think, you know, is the Pokemon that Rinya would have wanted to dodge out of the way of that attack. Foul play is going to come out from that Grim Snarl, but not dealing too much damage. No, the defensive capabilities of Groudon really mm -hmm. shining through there with how well it takes that that foul play and um, yeah like you say if you're going to miss one of the, the mm -hmm. opposing Pokemon you want it to be that Grimmsnarl and not the Zacian so you get nice respectable damage onto that Pokemon and it, again it is in a really bad position now with another Intimidate coming onto the field and reducing that attack stat even further. I mean, the Zacian is quite wisely, I think, jumping off the field. I was about to say, it kind of is forced to switch at this point, and Rinya's been able to use this opportunity to bring the ground on of his own onto the field. And this is a great position. You've got it in unintimidated. And this Precipice Blade from David's ground on is going to avoid the ground on on the switch. So this time, Grimstone does have to take a little bit of damage, and will have to also take a parting shot from the opposing Incineral. So David trying to switch up a little bit of the ball position play here. I really like how Rinya's been able to get the ground on in intimidated, and then David's kind of gone, hey, do you know what, I'm going to retreat it so that I can intimidate it later on. Yeah, and now David's going to be able to get his Charizard in for free. The Groudon coming in for free kind of from Ringier as well is nice. Mm -hmm. Missing that Precipice Blades, coming in with that full health uh, just gives you that little bit extra than you would normally have. So the Charizard coming in posing that immediate threat. Yes. Um, but it's the decision now, which Pokemon are you going to... It feels like a good time where both players have set up their screens, done the kind of the legwork early on in the mm -hmm. game. Now is it time to decide if I'm going to Dynamax something here or Gigantamax something. 
could we see the Charizard go for that Gigantamax? It's in a good position, but you've got to worry as well about what the Groudon on Rinya's side has. And also, if you are Rinya, if you do decide to attack into the Charizard, what item the Charizard has. <laughs> I really like the switch by David. You brought the Charizard and kind of maybe baited something coming out from the opposing Groudon and then just switching the Incineroar straight back in, getting that crucial Intimidate down and obviously applying Fake Up pressure going forward. It is going to be the Thunder Wave coming out from the Grim Snarl. Great switch in, being a Dark type, the Incineroar is immune to prankster moves and it's going to be able to eat its sugar berry in the same turn to withstand the damage from this precipice blades on Rinya's side yeah you can see how effective that that, that, that the reflect support mm -hmm. and the intimidate support really are here as both groudons who are normally renowned for doing so much damage with their <laughs> kind of signature precipice blades attack is really just doing neg negligible damage here doing little bits of damage mm -hmm. just chipping away and giving both players a lot of time to kind of try and maneuver and you can see this is what they're doing they're trying to get yes. themselves they're not taking any risks unnecessarily early on they want to feel probably 100 percent confident of the time when they actually start to go on the offensive it's kind of building that momentum now and getting yourself into a good position to be able to do that we saw the Reflect go away on David's side as well, so we know that Grimmsnarl's not holding something like the Light Clay as the Reflect's gone after five turns, not the extended eight it gets from that item. So there could potentially be a tricky, you know, item on the Grimmsnarl to possibly pose a few threats to Rinya's team. There's going to be the Fake Out going down into the Groudon, however, as Light Screen is set up on Rinya's side. I think this is good, particularly as David has already revealed that the Charizard is in the back, so you want to boost up your special defenses for later on. Groudon on David's side this time isn't going to avoid any Pokémon. We'll be able to get the double... Um, connection and the KO on the opposing Grimmsnarl as well as the sun leaves the field. Yeah, so if you are Rinya and you've got that Charizard in the back, it, the, the sun fading now is not the perfect not time. Not ideal. Not really, because you've got both Groudons out on the field and when you do kind of unleash the Charizard, you want that sun in play, you want that solar mm. power boost, you want to be able to get as much damage as possible onto the field. The thing that you could say is that the Groudon on on David's side of the field has taken a substantial amount of damage uh, already mm -hmm. um, so it is in a position where you think hmm, maybe it might be a bit it might be a bit reckless to kind of leave it in against the Charizard because it potentially could go down to one of these big attacks I completely agree and I can see David switching out the Incineroar as well as we see the Dynamax of the match here in Masters Top 16 it's going to be Rinya Dynamaxing up that Charizard now we've spoken previously about GMAX Wildfire being so beneficial to getting that residual damage but it means that despite it being a fire type move because it has this additional effect it's not going to reset the weather and bring the sun and that could be difficult for the offensive pressure of this Charizard but instead it's going to go for this max airstream it is not enough to One pick up HP. the KO amazing survive for here ground on but it will get the speed boost up on ring side of the field but ideally you would have loved to have got the ko there on the opposing ground on we see the precipice blades come out and connect into both of david's pokemon and get the double knockout so there's amazing synergy between Rinya using the charizard to boost up the speed meaning that the partner ground on is going to move first and get the double ko it means that Rinya's put himself in a fantastic position yeah with that speed boost that is huge for him here and especially taking down the grim snarl mm. as well it could be that one pokemon that you think okay that could come in and that could really disrupt how I want to function with my own Charizard, it's gone now, and you're in a great position to really utilize the rest of these the Gigantamax mm -hmm. turns. The unfortunate thing is, you know, you go for the, the, the G Max Wildfire, the signature move, the residual damage is not going to have any effect on these two fire types on exactly. the side of the field. And he's in a position now where the Charizard's still healthy enough. Um, to go for that Gigantamax, you've, already, you've laid another Intimidate mm -hmm. down to the Groudon, so that's definitely helping as well. And it will probably all come down to what the item is on these two Charizards for these mm -hmm. trainers, because you've got to imagine here, the only option for David in this situation is to Gigantamax that Charizard and kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with what Rinya is doing. Yeah, Rinya's Charizard is in a fantastic position here. We've seen a little bit earlier in the tournament, Charizard may be running something like Ancient Power in order to get that Max Rockfall. And that would put Charizard in a fantastic position. It's already speedier thanks to the Max Airstream boost, and David doesn't have that luxury. So this Charizard is in a great position to go for something like a Max Rock Full, deal with the opposing Charizard, then like you said, David is possibly gonna be forced to go for the Dynamax on here and try and remove it from the field. And also the Max Rock Full can be good against the Incineroar. I like the switch by Rinya bringing in 
the Zation here, it does allow you the utility to bring the weather back in later. You know, yeah. you don't really need the speed boost on that Groudon anymore. That was relevant for the last turn, but the weather could be helpful for Charizard towards the end game of this game one. David is indeed going to go for that Gigantamax on the Charizard, and I think this is the best option. If you're able to, you know, survive an attack from the opposing Charizard and then pick up a KO in return, that could swing the momentum back into David's favor. Of course, Fake Out will be going into what was the Groudon stock, because you cannot Fake Out into a Dynamax Pokemon. There will be no flinches, as it is actually just oh, again a max airstream misses. another max airstream maybe maybe predicting a protect on the charizard on david's side of the field mm -hmm. if you know this turn not going for it and trying to maximize the speed stat Ooh. on his side of the field to take advantage in case he doesn't target into the charizard and it does go for in fact what david has gone for in the airstream to kind of try and match the speed set let's keep ahead of this there's Ashi now on the field in a great position to get some huge mm -hmm. damage off on the field and you've got to suspect as well there could potentially be something like that max rockfall waiting in the mm -hmm. wings for one of these players to launch onto the opposing charizard zation's in a great position to pick up the knockout onto the incineroar so that's not really too much of a conversation point anymore and you don't mind if the zation goes down because then your ground on hits the field again you've got the sun up and you've got that final turn of your Gigantamax with your own Charizard powered up going into the opposing Charizard. Yeah, you make a very good point, Lee. And earlier you mentioned as well the items on these Charizard could be critical. And if they are running that kind of meta trend swing to running something like a weakness policy, you don't want to be in a position where you give that boost to your opponent. I think David here going for the max guard, just preserving the Charizard, taking this one max turn. As the max airstream comes out again from Rinya's own Charizard, picking up the Sonic KO against that Incineroar. And now if you're Rinya, you have these three very powerful Pokemon, you know, Zacian, Groudon, and Charizard, all who can just set their lenses down onto David's Charizard. Yeah, and that's it now, you know, the, the Zacian, although it's very low health, it's going to still be able to do a lot of damage with mm -hmm. something like that Behemoth Blade. We know it's double damage against Gigantamax and Dynamax Pokemon, mm -hmm. and even resisted from the Charizard. Depending on how David's trained it, still going to do a lot of damage, and you've still got to take into consideration, although it's not in its Gigantamax form anymore, that has ended for Rinya. What other options has he got there? Has he got something that he can make use of, like maybe that ancient power to do some big damage? Nothing has been revealed yet, but it maybe is indicative of what mm -hmm. the other player is expecting item-wise on the opposing Charizard. We have seen weakness policies this weekend, so that is something to really take into account. You do not want to be in a position where <laughs> you're hitting a super effective attack and it might not knock out and activate that weakness policy and give your opponent the boost that they mm -hmm. need to close this game out and go a step ahead head to going into the deeper into the tournament. Exactly, and I like how Rinya's also gone for the three max airstreams. Jumping into this turn, though, Zacian's going to go for that Behemoth Blade you mentioned earlier, because it also got an airstream boost that's nice and speedy, and it's not, of course, being able to pick up a KO, but that is such a chunk of damage. If the Charizard wants to follow up with this Hurricane, oh, it is not enough to get the KO, and Charizard can go for the G-Max Wildfire into the opposing Charizard. It's really not going to be dealing too much damage. The residual damage, I think, will be able to get the at the end of this turn, as we can see the KO is being taken here. But the one thing I was just talking about with the Max Airstreams is Rinya used all three Dynamax turns to get that speed advantage up on his side of the field. The fact that the Charizard on David's side went for that Max Guard means that no matter what, it's always going to be one Airstream behind. Yeah. So when the Dynamax turns are over, Rinya's own Charizard is going to be able to capitalize on that. Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing. And you think now, okay, you're, you're kind of depending on the move options. If you are Rinya, you're relying on Hurricane. Now the Sun's up with the Groudon coming in, that is going to be reduced accuracy, and are you relying on uh, a Fire-type attack, which, you know, I think that the Charizard and David's side of the field is so low that your mm -hmm. sun-boosted Fire-type attack, we know how powerful they are, is going to be enough, you just need it to make contact. Fortunately, the Groudon has lost that speed boost that it did have earlier on in this game, and again, the Charizard and David's side has had that additional speed boost on top of that, so it kind of takes it out of the equation, it's all down to mm -hmm. Rinya's Charizard to be able to deal with David's, and he's positioned himself so well, like yes. you say, utilizing those airstreams when he mm -hmm. had the opportunities to and not go for anything else because he had a clear win condition in sight. I think as well, you know, Charizard's not known for running spread moves necessarily in this format currently. So no matter who Charizard on David's side wants to target down, Rinya just has to connect a move at such low HP it will be able to get the KO. So Rinya is going to take game one in this top 16 match. You know, the absolute 
champion of Rinya Sun teams. These six Pokemon he is so well versed with, and you can see how well he's piloting it. But here we are in game two. Rinya is one game away from advancing into the top eight at the Pokemon World Championships 2022. The leads are coming out. It's going to be Charizard and Grimstar for Rinya, and on the opposing side for David, it is the Incineroar and the Zashin. Yeah, so there's Ashen coming out here for David and kind of identifying that, okay, maybe that worked for you, this could work for mm -hmm. me, let's get rid <laughs> of that Grimson. But Rinya kind of having a bit of a, a backup here because it's, it's almost saying by having the Charizard on the field, okay, you go after my Grimsnarl here, I'm going to make sure I get some return. I can Gigantamax this turn, and I can get a GMAX Wildfire pretty free into that slot, and if you decide to fake out with your Incineroar this turn into my Grimsnarl, I'm just going to switch into Groudon. So there's a lot of flexibility from Rinya's side of the field, lots of things for David to consider here, and it's a big turn for both players. Yeah, what was that you just said, Lee, about switching out the Grimmsnarl? It has switched out, but it's not going to be a Groudon. It's going to be the Incineroar. And again, I like this play, throwing the Intimidate down against the Zashin. Just going to be reducing the attack stat back down to neutral thanks to the Intrepid Sword boost it got previously upon switching onto the field. Charizard is going to play defensively too and just going straight up for a Protect. Doesn't want to have to take the potential Fake Out, but there is no Fake Out coming off in David's side. It's going to be straight away the Behemoth Blade from this Zashin going down into that Incineroar. So a great switch in here for Rinya, but you can see it still does that little bit of damage and that could end up being crucial towards the end of this game. Parting shot going down into that protect. Really like this play by Rinya. Yeah, he's put himself in a great position now. He's got the active fake out. Mm -hmm. He's got that intimidate cycle. And he's got his Grimmsnarl out of harm's way, so it can come in later on in this game and be a bit more useful. Obviously, neither player right now has any screen support up that you would normally see with this sort of team comp. But uh, the Grimstone being in the back for potentially to come in to be able to provide that in the late game mm -hmm. is going to be really important. And the patience as well here for not to jump ahead and just Gigantamax the Charizard that first turn um, and, and going for that Protect to get around any potential. Just get that board position right before you commit to any sort of plays. Well, we saw the Dynamax turns pretty late in game one, but in game two, is going to start straight away with Gigantamaxing up that Charizard. And Charizard in a great position here to go for something like those Max Airstreams stop, you know, getting the speed boost up, but you could also go for the G-Max Wildfire into that Zash and do a big chunk of damage and get residual flow happening on the field. It's going to be the Fake Out going down to the opposing Incineroar. I like this because then there's no potential parting shot to reduce the special attack of that Charizard, and Zashin on David's side is free, however, to go for the Behemoth Blade. It's going to target to go into the Dynamax, even though it's not super effective. Going into a Dynamax Pokemon does give Behemoth Blade that bit of an advantage, and it certainly chips away at Charizard. But Charizard obviously able to survive it, going for the Max Airstream, choosing to opt for speed over damage here, and just putting Charizard in a position to now apply great pressure to that Zashin in the following turn, because it's still on the field. It still could take that Fire-type move. Yeah, and you see the importance here, I think, of that speed control for Rinya, you know, mm. yeah, identifying you had the option there to go after the Zashin. It's the obvious play. You think, okay, let's get rid of it now. But you see that the Behemoth Blade damage, because of that Intimidate, is not as impactful as it normally would be, so it gives you a bit more room to get this speed control underway and targeting smartly into the incident or the one mm -hmm. Pokemon that you know doesn't have protect here. It's an easy fake out into that. Let's stop the partnering shot this next turn and put it in a position now where you can potentially double target into that yes. slot because mm -hmm. it either has to switch out or stay in and take another airstream and potentially a flare bits and if the airstream takes the Incineroar down then that flare bits is going to be redirected into that Zashin slot if it stays on the field and doesn't protect. That's a fantastic observation there Lee because as well looking at the behemoth blade damage on that Charizard it can take another one it's not worried about it it can just ignore oh. it on the field but we're actually going to see a out. switch and it's going to be the Grimmsnarl joining instead of that Incineroar potentially doubling up maybe Charizard is confident in its airstream being able to get the KO David going for the Protect here, doesn't want to risk any damage to the Zation, but it's going to be the G-Max Wildfire, so actually the Charizard going, I'm going to switch on the offensive a little bit and get this residual damage up, because even then, if the Zation's on the field, it's going to keep having its HP whittled away. Parting shot from Incineroar this time is going to be able to connect, so the Charizard's not going to be as offensively strong as it was previously. It kind of needs the Sun Boost now in order to be actually a threatening Pokemon to use its last turn of Dynamax. Yeah, but getting that G-Max Wildfire is a nice turn to get it in. You know, you don't have to worry about it now in this last mm. turn of your Gigantamax, especially with the opposing Charizard hitting the field. You know that residual damage is going to start chipping away at things like the Zashin and potentially whatever David's fourth and final mm -hmm. Pokemon is when it does hit the field. But David now positioned himself really well, getting the Charizard onto the field in front of the opposing Charizard after getting that parting shot, which is so critical. And I think you mentioned it, Lou, where the Charizard now really wants to have that sun activated from the Groudon. That potentially, you know, both players might not even have their Groudons mm -hmm. in this match. There may not be any sun, but, you know, the, the damage that the Charizard's taken on 
Rinya's side with that Behemoth Blade has it put it in range of a potential max rockfall from David's Charizard? That's a big question here. But you've got to worry though if you are David, that Charizard mm -hmm. has had that airstream boost. It is going to be the fastest thing on the field right now. Yeah, you're right. And David's going to make a switch. That's Ashen's finally going to leave the field, reset those Intimidates, and bring in an Intimidate user of David's own with that Incineroar. Just, you know, I think the fake up pressure is the key thing here as Dynamax ends for the Charizard at the end of the next turn. Charizard on David's side is just going to go for a Protect. And I think having that Incineroar to be able to help you set up a Gigantamax on the next turn could be beneficial. As Light Screen comes up from Rinya, identifying the Charizard. Hey, it's on the field. I need to start putting my defensive measures in play. GMAX Wildfire is going to be the option of choice. And it's going to go into that Incineroar switch in. So a great Great call by David to bring that in instead of leaving the Zashin vulnerable to take such an attack. In contrast to game one, Rinya's only got one max airstream boost up on the field. And the issue, like you mentioned, is if you bring in the Groudon, that's going to help out Rinya's Charizard, but it's also going to benefit David's. And at this point in time, with the amount of health that Charizard has left on David's side, you don't want to risk getting that weakness policy boost and setting up the sun. No, and that's it. And I think David's put himself in a great position here where he's now really not lost the Pokemon from the Gigantamax on, on Rinya's side. Mm. So he's kind of got through those turns really effectively and he's got himself in a position now where he's able to go for the Gigantamax himself if he chooses to and start applying the pressure from his side of the field. He's got that fake out this next turn to mm -hmm. slow down this Grimmsnarl, prevent it from being able to disrupt his own Charizard. And yeah, it's going to be a, an opportunity for David now to maybe start getting airstreams onto the field. Yeah, and you know, Rinia sacrifices that airstream boost on the Charizard and makes a switch as well. And now the tables really have turned and David's Charizard's in the driving seat. It's able to apply a lot of offensive pressure and it's forcing Rinia to make these switches and bring on your less offensive Pokemon, such as the Char um, such as the Grimmsnarl, such as the Incineroar, while David's able to capitalize on that and deal some big damage. And you can see how intimidating this Charizard is looking down on the battlefield as the Incineroar goes for the fake and to the Grimmsnarl. So it can't go for anything here to allow Rinia some more defensive measures. As the Charizard goes for the max airstream. Thanks to the light screen previously though, that's not going to be dealing too much damage. Yeah, and you can you can really see the difference when the sun's not boosting the Charizard's attack as well as that light screen stacking for Rinya's defensive mm -hmm. capabilities. Not really doing as much as you kind of used to seeing Charizard do. <laughs> Grim's not taking that really well and in a position now where Rinya's kind of gone back and forth a, a bit with the, the ability to get the Incineroar onto the field and now utilize that Grim Snarl, get that Thunder Wave <laughs> onto the Charizard on David's side of the field and really kind of take away any of those Airstream boosts that he's going to be able to get oh, either this turn. Oh, it's that's a huge turn not to be able to attack. Yeah, David losing a turn of that Dynamax thanks to the paralysis that Grimmsnarl threw its way. I mean, we saw that reveal in game one and it wasn't able to find its mark. So excellent play here by Rinya, identifying, hey, I can't do anything to stop the max airstream boost, but I can paralyze that Charizard so it can't benefit from them. And then you get this additional roll of the dice if you can get that Pokemon paralyzed. Yeah, and if you, the thing is, if, if, if David can't get the, the GMAX Wildfire going here, then it does make it a little less effective of a Gigantamax, and especially because you're only getting two turns out of the three, and, and showing how useful that Thunder Wave actually is, not just to slow the Charizard down, take out the equation, any Airstream boost that you do get, but also take away the fact that you're not going to get any residual damage on some of the Pokemon mm -hmm. on Rinya's side. Well, it breaks through its final turn of Dynamax, going for another Max Airstream, so getting the speed boost up on David's side of the field. And I mean, it's a really interesting situation here. You've got foul play coming out from the Grim Snarl, going down into the opposing Incineroar, but it's not enough to be able to pick up the KO against it. No, and I think it's really interesting to see how both players have been able to get around. Like you've got, you've got to say that the the, the fully the, the fully paralyzed on the Charizard and David's side is a bit unfortunate. Yeah. Not getting the maximum turns out of your Gigantamax when you go for it is always mm -hmm. not the best situation. But both players have handled the opposing Gigantamax very well. Very well. And mm -hmm. it's it's still very even. You would say the status condition on the Charizard is is the one thing that probably gives Rinya a bit more of an edge now going into that. But the two Airstreams have kind of compensated for that, so the speed stats haven't changed too much. But you've always got the chance of having that fully paralyzed mm -hmm. if it happens on each and every turn.
Yeah, and I know you said earlier it's unfortunate that the GMAX Wildfire didn't go up for David, but then he's been able to play very well around the GMAX Wildfire that Rinya was able to yeah. set up by having both fire types on the field that are not going to take damage from the residual flow and is going to be able to just sort of stall that out a bit. It's going to be another switch, however, from the Incineroar joining for Rinya as Charizard protects at this point in time. And we're going to see the Flare Blitz come out from David's Incineroar. We've seen a flip to the offensive a little bit more here, trying to just chip away at the Pokemon that were on the field. You know, Grimmsnarl and the Charizard don't have a lot of HP remaining. We're finally going to see the Ancient Power reveal from David's Charizard, but it goes straight into that Protect. If you're Rinya, though, you now know that that is possible, and I believe the Light Screen just ended. Yeah, it's not the best timing for that Light Screen to end, nope. but you do have your own Incineroar on the field. You do have that Fake Out support to give you a little bit of a freer option here to potentially avoid any incoming ancient power attacks this mm -hmm. next turn and um, it will you know it, it forces David into maybe having to think should I protect my Charizard here should I switch it out here and potentially get something like you could all almost get the the dash in onto the field because the, the Charizard now on Rinya's side is, is it hasn't got the speed boost. So if you can get your Zashin onto the field, it's low enough health where anything that Zashin throws out onto the to the Charizard would be mm -hmm. enough to pick up the knockout. You're right, and you see the Charizard protect on David's side in the loot of that fake out from Rinya's Incineroar that switched in. We're gonna see the throw chop as well doing just little bits of chip damage to this opposing Incineroar as Agent Power is revealed on Rinya's Charizard as well. So good information for both of these players to gain from those last couple of turns, but it certainly adds to the pressure as well because you know that there's the capability to go for the Ancient Power. And particularly if you're David, you will get high risk, high reward for clicking it, but the issue is if your Charizard gets paralyzed, then you're gonna be in a really difficult situation. Rinya does switch in the Zacian here. Yeah, and he's got the, the Zacian onto the field. It's a little bit dangerous because if a Flare Blitz comes out from that Incineroar uh, on David's side of the field into that slot, it's gonna do a lot of damage, but we don't see that. We just see the parting shot, which is gonna be very mm -hmm. useful for David, lowering that attack stat. Um, but you know, there's always a chance if Charizard's on the field, it has got the option to click a fire type attack. If you predict maybe the Zacian coming onto the field and you hit it with one of the super effective attacks, it gives Rinya a few more problems. I mean, it's been a tale of two halves here. You've got a lot of Pokemon, for example, the Charizard, the Incineroar, that have been chipped away out constantly throughout this battle, and they're really on their last legs in terms of HP. And then you've got Pokemon like Charizard and Zacian, who have been able to survive with their HP bars fully intact, and this Groudon that's just switched in for David, finally bringing the sun back to the field for both of these Charizards to kind of bask in at this point. The Ancient Power is going to come out going into the Protect of Rinya's Charizard. And of course, Solar Power, this is the one issue as well. Look at the Charizard on Rinya's side. It's already in a precarious amount of health. That Solar Power is going to keep chipping away at it. And if Rinya's not careful, he's going to lose his own Charizard to its own ability. Yeah, that's it. You've probably got a couple of turns where you, if you take no damage, you're going to be able to uh, just go down to that Solar Power because mm -hmm. it is, like you say, chipping away each turn. So you're on the clock right now to make sure you get the most out of your Charizard. You've got this which is going to be able to do significant amount of damage to either the Groudon or the Charizard, but it is so threatened. Like you see, when you're doing, he has to retreat it and making use of that Incineroar's Intimidate once more onto this physical attacking Groudon. Yeah, and I think something interesting of note in this game too, there have been no knockouts so far. These players playing so cautiously and making sure they're in the right ball position as Charizard gets paralyzed. It is unable to move, allowing Rinya's Charizard to go for the Ancient Power into the opposing Charizard and oh, it will and be able knock. to get the KO. That paralysis is so... Uh, Oh, it's not what you <laughs> want to see, not that turn, because you see that that Charizard would have went it first. It was going faster, yes, and thanks to the would, airstream. And that, that is the biggest difference there for such a shame for David and that Charizard not being able to move really swings all the momentum here. Now that Charizard, <laughs> it has, like you say, it has got one more turn until his solar power does take it down. The Incineroar onto the field now has got the Intimidate onto the ground on Sol, giving you that big advantage there. Um, but can you get around this mm -hmm. next turn and get some sort of use out of the Charizard before it does go down to the solar power? I think I need to begin again here because as the commentators curse, I said there hasn't been a KO yet and then the Charizard does go down. I mean, David now has the utility to be able to bring in a Pokemon from the back and try and capitalize on the fact that Rinya doesn't have, you know, the airstream boost that David necessarily had. 
but you have to be very cautious now of how these speed tiers are going to interact. Both of Rinya's Pokemon are in very dangerous positions. We saw the Precipice Blades come out, connect into the Incineroar. It had its Sugar Berry, so it's not going to be able to take another one of those. But David's Groudon in Game 1 wasn't exactly the most accurate of Pokemon with those Precipice Blades, and that's always an issue that falls into play. Incineroar from David is going to come in and intimidate the opposing Incineroar, but I think critically, you have the Fake Out here. And Rinya's Charizard's in a difficult spot because if you protect her and stall out the Fake Out, yeah. then you're going to lose, you know, you're going to be KO'd thanks to the Solar Power. But then if you stay in, you're going to be knocked out by Fake Out. So I don't know if Brynja's going to let it sit here and go down or maybe switch it out to preserve it for later. Yeah, maybe bring in the Grim Snarl and let the Grim Snarl take an incoming Precipice Blades. Mm. Might be a better option. And then at least it gives you the Charizard to attack with one more turn, knowing that you can get it back in in the sun for that one final turn to attack before it does go down mm -hmm. to that Solar Power. And like you say, we are seeing that play out here because we know the speed tiers between the two Incineroars, it looks like David's Incineroar is faster than yes. Rainier's one, so going to be able to always get that fake out off first. Yeah, and we see the way that turn plays out. You call it perfectly there, Lee. Grimmsnarl switching in and just seeing the fake out a piece into these opposing Pokemon. So there's now no more of that kind of fake out pressure. How does David, you know, navigate around this now? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, you've, you're sitting on the field with a pretty healthy Groudon, so the w one thing that you don't really want to see too much of is the, the Intimidate cycling from the Incineroar on Rinya's side. You want to try and remove that option as, mm -hmm. as quick as possible and then limit the switching options that Rinya's got. So if you can catch the Incineroar with a Precipice Blades, obviously the Reflect going up, not ideal either, but, you know, neither side's got the more healthy options, but the Precipice Blades does connect this time, even through the Intimidate and that Reflect. <laughs> it is a able to pick up a double knockout loop. Yeah, this is amazing for David here. Getting the double KO and now forcing Rinya to bring in the Zacian and the Charizard from the back. And I think the lovely thing for David here is he's been able to get that Zacian in on his side unintimidated. As is, you know, Rinya here, but David still has the Incineroar on the back, so it may not stay that way for long. No, and the nice thing what David's done here is he's put himself in a position where, okay, my Groudon is going to be threatened by that Charizard. Mm -hmm. Charizard's so low health, though, at the minute, and it hasn't got any sort of speed control. It's not got a speed boost or anything, mm -hmm. so the Zacian is going to be able to outspeed it on David's side of the field and pick up the knockout there, and then you want to just rely on your Groudon to deal with the opposing Zacian, which probably hasn't got enough to be able to... It might be able to take down. Depends on the speed, you know? If, if Rinya's Zacian can outspeed David, Zashin, then you may be able to pick up the knockout. That creates the opening that the Charizard needs, but it's all about which Zacian is faster and can Rinya's knock out David before it gets the attack onto the Charizard. And David switching out the ground on here, which I really like because I believe Sun is going to end it this turn so you can maintain that a little bit later on in this match and apply so much pressure to that poor Charizard. The Incineral coming in as well. You can apply fake out pressure going into this next turn, and that's a luxury Rinya does not have. But Zacian actually going, Luno, I've got a third option. I'm going to go for a quick, quick attack and get rid of Charizard here and now. Just leaving. Rinya's own Zacian on the battlefield. Yeah, and also dropping that Intimidate crucially onto <laughs> the, the Zacian on Rinya's side of the field. Not quite enough to allow it mm. to uh, his own Zacian to survive that Behemoth Blade, but more importantly, getting it back down to that neutral attack so it's not so much of a threat when the Groudon does enter the field again. And you've got the fake out now from the Incineroar, giving you mm -hmm. that extra turn that you need, and then two Pokemon um, that are really super effectively hitting the Zacian every turn. Zacian, one drawback mm -hmm. is that it only has access to single target attacks. Yes. I mean, that is certainly a difficult situation. You can see as well at the top of the screen, it just flashed up. There are only three minutes left in this particular game, too. It has certainly been a long one of masterful pivoting in and out, making sure that you have that fake out advantage. But I think you make a good point here. You know, Zacian does tend to only really run those single target attacks. And I think it's interesting that David is taking all the time that he does still have on that My Time to bring in the Groudon. It's the only Pokemon choice he has. He's lost two Pokemon. But he's using these extra seconds to think, hey, how am I going to play this? Which Pokemon is this Zacian going to target down into? And at the end of the day, the Sun's coming back onto the field thanks to Drought. The Incineroar can go for something like a Flare Blitz and deal big damage, but it's also going to take a chunk of that in Recoil, and then it can KO itself. And if Groudon misses these Precipice Blades, Zacian might be able to capitalize on that. Yeah, that's a, that's a big worry. I think you want to utilize your Fake Out here to maybe give you a little bit more thinking mm -hmm. time. But it really, I think, comes down to the Precipice Blades hitting, unless you've got a bit more of a... Um, a more accurate move to rely on because if you have you've got a fire type attack maybe mm -hmm. something like 
heat crash fire punch it's you know got that better accuracy you're going to be able to just u utilize that with a bit more comfort and then take down the zashin without having to rely on the accuracy of precipice blades which mm -hmm. we've already seen david's ground on have a few issues already in this maybe set. it was just warming up you know just it's been pretty up. consistent yeah. throughout most of this game too so we maybe don't want to you know handle its nerves a little bit by reminding it but you know that's what we're here to do zation does go for the protect however in the lead of that fake out and i think that was a really good identification Groudon is going to go for the Precipice Blades, however, and I think if Davide's going to commit to that, particularly as it's going to be single target, the Groudon's coming and intimidated, that's going to be hitting really hard against the Zacian. Yeah, and I think uh, what you need to do here if you're Rainier is hope you can take a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar on the sun. <laughs> let that recoil take down the Incineroar because it's so low health. Mm -hmm. Hit your Behemoth Blades, do enough damage, avoid the Precipice Blades, and then hopefully that will be enough. But I think Davide is cultivate this end game so yeah. well he's he, 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 he is in the driving seat now he just needs to lock this one up and as i say we haven't really seen any other options on the ground on so there could be fire type of attacks that would take out the equation of any accuracy issues that could be there anyway i mean this is thing zation if it removes the incineroar now then Groudon's just able to go for the Precipice Blades. And I don't think that there is a lot that Zacian can do to necessarily knock out Groudon in this turn. It's going to go for the Behemoth Blade, though, into that imposing Incineroar, and possibly just sort of cross its paws a little bit to think, hey, maybe these Precipice Blades are going to miss. I'm going to get lucky. I can go for these Behemoth Blades. Incineroar's out of action. It's going to be Heat Crash, however, Lee, you said. That could be that Fire Time move. It goes into the Zacian. Doesn't quite do 50%, though. So it's going to take, you know, another one and one more of those. And I don't know if Groudon's going to have that capability to survive all the Precipice Blades. The, the time has run out, actually. I didn't see it at the top. Battle timer has run out, and ooh, just in time there, <laughs> taking away any issues with the Precipice Blades. Wow. David using all the tools necessary, then mm -hmm. taking out the equation of having to rely on their Precipice Blades, because if it does miss, it does put you in an awkward position. Well, once again, Lee, we're here in a game three. It is Masters Top 16 of the 2022 Pokemon World Championships. One game between David and Rinya to see who will get into that top eight. And I believe there are some players already waiting for them with their eyes on the screen. Let's have a little look at the leads in this game three. Rinya is going for the Incineroar and the Grimmsnarl. And David has also got Grimmsnarl, but paired up with the Charizard. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the more offensive pressure going into this turn one is from David with that Charizard. It's going to have access to that Gigantamax straight away. But whether or not you want to go for that early on or whether you want to preserve it like you did in game one, is probably another option and he's still got Pokemon in the back that he mm -hmm. can bring in. He's got the Grimstall next to it as well to support with things like light screen and reflect that we've already seen. Um, but Rinya's put himself in a nice position, not wanting to rush into anything. He's given himself nice options. He's got the, the screen support himself. He's got the, the threat of that Thunder Wave as well onto David's Charizard that you've got to be aware of. And there's also the threat of the parting shot from the Incineroar. So, you know, you don't really need to go for a fake out here. Yeah, you know, you go for it into the Grimmsnarl, you kind of delay in the screens for one extra turn. So maybe just let it set the screens up, but get that parting shot into the Charizard, reduce its effectiveness, especially if you can get your light screen with your own Grimmsnarl to kind of get around these Gigantamax turns. And I love this bold start from David here. Not only do you switch in the ground on set the sun up for your Charizard, but you also click that Gigantamax button for the Charizard being able to get into such a strong position, solar power boosted. You can now be in a, in a good spot to be able to go for something like the G-Max Wildfire, possibly down into that Grimmsnarl. Just pick up a huge chunk of damage and set the residual fire going. Alternatively, you can always go for that max airstream and start getting the speed boost up while Groudon managed to make it in unintimidated. And Rinya also goes for the Reflect. This is not going to help out against the special attacks coming from the Charizard. And it's going to be the G-Max Wildfire into that Grimmsnarl. And that is a one-hit KO. Rinya's down a Pokemon already. That's a huge turn for David here, taking the opportunity with mm -hmm. the Charizard, getting the ground on in, being very aggressive in his play, and setting the reflect up, not the light screen, not going to help, and predicting maybe on the, 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 it's too early for the Charizard to mm -hmm. Gigantamax here, but Davida taking the opportunity and really capitalizing on it, taking away that option of that Thunder Wave that was such a hindrance in that game too, and now the Charizard has got its G-Max Wildfire, the residual mm -hmm. damage is starting, and it's in a position to start getting these airstreams out this next turn to really put itself and the Groudon into a dominating position to try and close this 
this one out. And Charizard's going to be delighted seeing the Grimms not go down. There's no chance of a light screen being set up. It's just going to be able to go on the rampage here. Possibly now the wildfire set up. You can go for those max air streams and boost up the speed, particularly when the Groudon's right next to you. It can apply so much pressure with something like a Precipice Blades, forcing that Incineroar to possibly retreat. Yes, it can come back and do some Intimidate action, but you're still going to catch Pokemon with that Precipice Blades while Charizard's free to go for some big damage. Even in the sun, you know, now the Groudon switched, and again, you might still want to go for something like the GMAX Wildfire, because we've seen how much damage it can do. Yeah, that's a big thing. You've got to be a bit careful about what the item is on the Groudon, and if the Groudon decides to go for its Dynamax mm. here, then, you know, it might be able to take the, the, the big Fire-type attack uh, better than you expected to, and then return, retaliate with a big max rock fall and yes. pick up the knockout there so that's always a risk and you don't really want to kind of get yourself in that position where you could go for the airstream it's going to be boosted by the sun anyway you're going to do respectable damage and you are going to be able to get that crowd on a little bit faster but the big thing that you've got to worry about there that we did see in that game one is the fact that the um, the incineroar there did go for um, and it wasn't a flare blitz there it didn't go for a parting shot either Exactly, and we see the Dynamax Rinya um, of the Groudon coming into play. And it's going to be a G-Max Wildfire coming down into the opposing Grim uh, Groudon that's going to go for a Max Phantasm. We're getting so tongue-tied on the desk here, Lee. It goes down into the Groudon, and I love this play because it lowers the defense of the opposing Pokemon, so that Groudon in the next turn is going to be able to apply even more pressure. There is a follow-up with the Precipice Blades on David's side, going to be activating that Shooker Berry on the Incineroar once again, so it's going to be a little bit more vulnerable to a Precipice Blades going forward as the parting shot comes out from Incineroar into the Charizard, so reducing its special attack, making it slightly less of a threat. And I love the way Rinya has been able to position this, bringing in that Max Phantasm to allow it that little bit more flexibility going forward. Yeah, definitely. And the, what I was trying to say was the Burning Jealousy was the yes. option there <laughs> on the Incineroar. I just need to confirm that. Um, <laughs> But the Burning Jealousy kind of puts a little bit of a, a question mark over whether I want to go for the Airstream. Because if you go for it and you boost the speed of your ground on, if you are on the lead side of the field, then it would, of course, burn the ground on that turn. And you mm -hmm. do not want your ground on burned if you're David. You want to have it in as healthy a position as possible. But like you say, getting the defense drop on the Charizard, really nice play there from mm -hmm. Rinya. Yeah, but it's nice to see that reveal as well. You literally just mentioned, Lee, that the item on that Groudon could, you know, stop Charizard from being able to deal so much damage, but it's carrying something like the Assault Vest. And often when we see the Ghost Time move, you know, coming off something um, like a, you know, Shadow Claw, for example, that often does indicate that it's going to be the Assault Vest variant. You can see it takes this Max Airstream so well, too, boosting up the speed on David's side. Um, and, you know, allowing the Groudon on David's side as well to benefit from that boost. It's going to be able to go for the Stone Edge into the opposing Charizard. It is enough to get the one-hit KO, just removing it straight away so that Rinya cannot utilize it in this match as Groudon follows up with the Max Rockfall. Now, bearing in mind there's been the defense drop on that opposing Charizard, it also gets the knockout. Charizard is down and out in this top 16 match. Charizard's denied that turn. Groudon <laughs> saying no and no. <laughs> Taking both the Charizards down. A great play from David catching it with the stone edge there and just removing it so it's not even an issue going forward limiting Rinya down to just two Pokemon now and obviously mm -hmm. the Groudon able to take those attacks because of the parting shot from earlier on and then returning with a big max rock for getting the weather more in a favorable position here going forward but very low health going into this latter turns of the game. Incineroar coming in though, it has got the mm -hmm. Intimidate. It is going to reduce the uh, attacking power of the Zacian that's now coming for the Vida and the Groudon, so we're not going to be hitting as hard, but you've got to worry that Zacian is has got the speed advantage, mm -hmm. just needs to protect to get around the fake out, and it's going to probably be in a position to really do a number on the Groudon on Rinya's side. Yeah, that's the thing. David looking strong with both the restricted in play here. And of course, Groudon will still be able to benefit from the potential boost it got from the Charizard. But we're actually going to see a switch straight away. Groudon's just getting out of there. Doesn't want to have to, you know, suffer the consequences of that Intimidate. And Grimmsnarl can switch in in its place, allowing the Zacian next to it to go for a Protect. And these defensive plays for David can help out towards the endgame situation. Max Quake comes out, though, into the Grimmsnarl. So it isn't enough to get the KO. And of course, Rinya's now going to get the special defense boost. But that doesn't matter. Charizard Charizard's not on the field anymore. You're only really against physical attackers. Yeah, and you've got to hope that this is the flare blitz into that Grim Snarl to mm -hmm. remove it to tie up 
two Pokemon apiece now, <laughs> and it is going to be the Groudon and the Zacian on the V side of the field against the Incineroar and the Groudon on Rinya's side. Of course, the GMAX Wildfire chipping away at that Groudon on Rinya's side as well, putting it in a really dangerous spot. David now obviously forced to bring the Groudon in from the back, so the weather's going to reset too, and Sun will rejoin the field. My concern is going to be the Precipice Blades here, right? And the speed interactions of these Groudons, because Precipice Blades coming out from David's side can deal super effective damage to that Incineroar. We have seen it's already eaten its Sugar Berry, and then Groudon's just going to fall over if it gets hit by the small minor earthquake there. And Groudon on Ringer's side, it's out of its Dynamax turn, so it can now use its spread move, Precipice Blades. It will deal so much damage to the opposing Zashin, but will it be enough to get the KO, considering its full health? Yeah, and that's the thing, and I think the Zacian is a little bit worried about the, the Incineroar as well, obviously, because uh, Flare Blitz, boosted by the sun, mm -hmm. is probably going to be enough to take it down. Well, David, Zacian goes for the Behemoth Blade. It has dealt with the Groudon, so now you have got this Incineroar facing down against David's Groudon that is going to click... A Oh, it's going to say, going to click Christmas Blades, but it doesn't need to. It's going for the Heat Crash here. Going to be just chipping away at this opposing Incineroar that is able to retaliate with the Flare Blitz, boosted up by the Sun into the Zacian. It gets a one-hit KO against it. Yeah, to tying it up once again, taking the Zacian down, and then mm -hmm. it's going to be that Incineroar versus the Groudon here. And the, the problem is that you're the Incineroar on Rinya's side. You all have to rely on the Flare Blitz here to take down the Groudon. Is it going to be enough to take it down? And if it does, is it gonna, the recoil mm -hmm. going to be a factor here and take yourself down at the same time? It took so much recoil, you know, knocking out Zacian from full HP there. And now Incineroar's in a dangerous spot. Groudon, you know, could go for the, the risky play of the Precipice Blades, but you might as well go for something like the Heat Crash, do that little bit of damage. And even if it doesn't KO, the Incineroar's going to do it to itself with Flare Blitz recoil. But it and does it actually enough. get the it's knockout. Enough. David Carrera is going to take the mantle of Rinya's son over to himself into top eight. Congratulations to David. Massive congratulations to both players, but yes. huge congratulations to David. Be moving on to top eight in the 2022 World Championships, and that is incredible. What a set, what a duel backwards and forwards between both of these incredible players using an incredible team.